so hey guys i am permanently leaving japan after over five years of living here i just said that <laughs> to be fair if this was happening in my first year i would be so excited to sit down here and make this video but fast forward to more than five years later and i finally like made this place like a home i've made it work for me and so it's 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 like letting go of a comfort zone in case you're seeing me for the first time um i'll give you a backdrop story literally that's what this video is about just taking you guys down memory lane and officially welcoming you to start this new phase or journey with me so in january or so the early part of 2018 i finally got the golden email that said i was shortlisted to come to japan through the max japanese government scholarship and i was so excited to be honest fast forward to september 25th 2018 i embarked on the journey and um i cried so much you know it's normal um that you prayed for something sometimes doesn't always mean that when it comes you'll be jumping you know sometimes it changes change is not a very it's not a it's not a conversant route so as it's with something that is not conversant comes anxiety comes excitement and still comes happiness right so i landed japan i flew from motala mohammed airport lagos 2018 i landed japan 27 september i remember 2018 narita airport tokyo japan and i I started my life in case you don't know I came here for masters and PhD all my life I knew chemistry only as physical chemistry organic chemistry inorganic analytical you know those kind of cough side I've never known chemistry as bioanalytical I've never known that inside chemistry you could be talking about virus RNA DNA so having to be in a lab that that was the research focus i won't lie i kind of struggled so the first year was not entirely or exactly my best year if i will be honest which i've said several times uh aside the fact that i was thrown into a new world of research i also came with a very close mind because of all the bias people had about japan so simply put i didn't enjoy my first year I wanted out as a matter of fact in my first year i wrote gre i wrote toffel applied for other scholarships i actually was this close to leaving japan i got offers story for another day but then i decided to stay back after that one year i think from around 2019 2020 ending 2019 i guess I just became more open-minded after I clocked one year. I became more open-minded. I had to tell myself hard truth like if I'm here, if I'm any place for even as little as one month, I have to make the place work because I mean at the end of the day, being sad, being sad for one month takes years to correct in terms of mental health. So I began to, I became more open-minded and then in addition, after like a bit into one year, I love my research. I started to understand things better. It's so funny when I think about the recent or the conferences I have had to attend, to attend the seminars or the presentations I do, symposiums. And I remember how bold I am now. I'm just like, I have grown. I came into this country young, naive, unsure, close-minded and looking at myself now, seeing how much I've grown, like if you wake me from my sleep, I can give you two pages 
of my research of RNA of virals of conserve region like I'm so passionate about what I did now coming from someone who could barely read a journal without sleeping off because I didn't understand it or because I did not enjoy or I did not it was just a very new terrain I have grown so much in Japan Aside research, I just became I became more open-minded. I started to love the country. I started to explore. I started to see them for who they were. Um, early 2020 or you know first half or so, I started YouTube. I think I'm so grateful for YouTube because with this platform, I kind of became more conscious about creating memories and just taking you guys along i met new people i met content creators i created videos that you guys loved i i traveled i thought i went places i fell completely in love with japan no cap like Omo, Japan would always have a soft spot in my heart. My mom came last year and she visited, stayed with me for a month and it was just so surreal. And every single thing I know that I tell you guys I love about Japan, my mom kept saying the same thing. She kept repeating the same thing even to her friends back in Nigeria. Japan is peaceful. Japan is quiet. Japan is safe. Japan is sane. Japan is morally upright. Japan took a very big shot on me they didn't have to i don't even want to sit down and calculate how much these people invested in my life from masters up until phd uh, my masters officially ended 2020 september and i started my phd first of october 2020 and i was just i was just so excited to be here there was no other place i wanted to be to be honest i did a video when i traveled to the states comparing the states or comparing i've compared different countries to japan and so many of you always drop comments like chilo i can see you really love japan chilo you're so attached to japan i am who wouldn't you know these people have been part of my success story i cannot even write any story about myself today without japan so many of you got to know me because of my japan videos here on youtube japan Jap i grew in all areas of my life here you know spiritually financially emotionally everything to be very honest no country is perfect i know i've sat down here and i've talked and talked and talked but definitely just like every other country japan is not perfect right it's not a perfect country it's not a perfect system but i just made it work for me for over five years i was just saying it the other day to someone that i feel very strongly that when i am leaving like for now it has not yet dawned on me that i am leaving even though our flight is less than two months away but i feel like when it finally happens when i'm at the airport i think i would cry honestly and it's just normal when you have stayed in a place and made it home the same thing happened when i was leaving nigeria i cried you know doesn't mean that where i'm going to next is not a good place or something it's just normal with you know stepping on new waters trying out new things starting afresh and everything you would have anxiety but on the other hand you would have happiness honestly japan has been good to me and my household that's just a simple way to put it this country opened me up to traveling to different countries from here i've been to germany i've been to singapore i've been to us i've traveled back to nigeria twice i have you know a, a certain degree of international exposure all thanks to japan and believing in me um, in this country too I grew socially because the country is so different that you just have to find a way to like coping mechanism in this country so I started YouTube <laughs> um, you know there's so much so 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 much stereotype about Japan bias reservation not so many people see here as a destination location and it's very okay I am NOT here to shove down my choice or my belief on any other on everybody I'm a very strong advocate for do you 
and just be in God's will. If God is sending you to a place that is not a popular location and he's telling you just be here first, I know what I'm doing, I would establish you and you're a Christian, why not, you know? And that was it for me in Japan. When I wanted to leave, it felt like God was like, I'm not done here yet, you know? And I stayed and I have no regrets whatsoever. I won awards in this country. I remember the first day that my prof, you know, told me that he got an email that I was nominated for a super global university scholar award or so. I'm like, sorry, excuse me. <laughs> I know I don't share my professional life here so much but yes there is a whole life outside youtube i've won awards in this country i've gotten recommendations i've gotten i've gotten scholarships i've gotten it's it's just been beautiful i i remember the best poster award um i got for in a conference when i presented my poster and guys this is not a conference that had novices that you say okay you just use big english and confuse them it was a conference that had professionals i had professors in that conference there was this particular woman that even has a specialty in fluorophore which is one of the areas i am dealing with she will ask i will answer it's funny because that particular conference it was close to when i traveled back for my wedding so i forgot i had the conference it took somebody else in the lab to make me remember that i had that conference i had to use just about three days or so to prepare my poster it was a rush preparation literally so i didn't really prepare much and for me to win a poster award it just made me know that it's not even about the dying minutes reading it's about the fact that i had already stuffed up i was already stuffed up with so much knowledge about what i was doing like i'm so aware of what i'm doing the way i was answering that woman when she left it clicked i'm like kai chuma you've come a really long way this same you that struggled with even convincing yourself that this is chemistry because this is a blend of analytical chemistry and bio right is the same you now is standing here you know conversing with professors and not even stuttering because you're so sure of what you're saying and i remember when they were calling out the awards in that conference i sat there i didn't even believe i'll win an award my own was just that people should do fast let me go back i had so many things to tick off my list against my trip and i had my poster number also I didn't even still stand up because I didn't know I didn't know it was me till I started hearing my title design of this, this I'm like that sounds like my title and it was actually my title we're three that won that award and so that's just to give you a glimpse of how much I have grown over the years but yeah just as with is just as it is with every other thing in life even the Bible said there is time for everything there's a time for the next phase Japan has been good but it's just time for the next phase it's time for the next chapter of my life and yeah no bad blood whatsoever Japan is that country that I know that I might stay and just want to still visit because it feels like I have a very sentimental attachment to them I but it's just time for next thing it's just time for the next phase the only thing that is constant in life is change i remember someone asking me if you had to go back five years ago would you still choose japan and i didn't even stutter in a heartbeat i answered yes i don't have any regrets i i'm grateful i passed through japan to where i'm going to because honestly aside scholarship and studying i don't even know if any other thing would have brought me here so i'm grateful that this scholarship made me come here and have this asia experience and i'm grateful for it but like i said it's time for the next thing it's time for the next phase and that's just what this video is about i'm trying to let you know that we are onto the next phase and i'm going to be taking you guys along with me on this journey don't worry in subsequent videos you'll get a clearer picture of everything but this video is just to officially open this series and tell you that it's time for the next phase thank you guys love you guys and see you next time on chilo talks bye for now guys